In this tutorial, we will create quick and unique custom special effects. As usual, there are many ways of making our images more interesting in Photoshop Elements. We can work with the existing filters while at the same time being able to create our own unique effects. Since Photoshop Elements allows us to approach one style in many ways, there cannot be a wrong way. My suggestion is that we never use filters as they are. We can take advantage of filters by mixing them with other available options and by blending them through layers. Another fun way to make your digital images more interesting is by scanning paper textures and by mixing them and blending them in Photoshop elements. I'm going to make one of my pictures look super old. What you see on the screen is the final image. Now let's see what it takes to get to this point. Let's duplicate the layer by clicking on Ctrl J if you are on a Windows platform and Command J if you are using a Mac. Next, hit Alt Ctrl B on your keyboard to make your image black and white. Then select Newspaper this is going to blow out your highlights. Notice the different options that you have here. I'll lower the contrast by setting the value to about negative 41 and then I'll increase the red channel value to about 113. This will give me a flat picture with blown out highlights. The highlights will be filled with paper texture. To be honest with you, sometimes I don't know what the final result will be. It's very important to play around. Don't take this too seriously. Now, let's make our adjustments. Set the contrast to negative 41. You don't have to get it right. Just get close to it. If you put your mouse above the slider, you'll notice the value. Now, let's increase the red channel value to about 113. Once you get close enough, simply click OK. I have a library of thousands of different paper textures. Many of them I have created myself and some of them have been purchased. I'll select three different textures and blend them with this picture. Notice my textures in my project bin. I'm going to start with the first texture. I'll click on it and drag it into my image. The texture is a little big, so I'll have to downsize it. You can simply do that by hitting Ctrl T on your keyboard or Command T if you are using a Mac. By holding the Shift button down, I will resize my image. Then you can hit enter or hit the check mark. Next, I'll select a blending mode. My choice will be linear burn. Notice what it does to the picture. Now I'm going to place another image on top of this layer. I'll rotate it and place it at the bottom. Hit Ctrl T on your keyboard or Command T, come to the edge of this image, and then click and simply rotate. Hold the Shift key and then downsize the image. Once you're fine with it, hit Enter or click the check mark. The blending mode for this one will be set to multiply. Let's go to our blending modes and then select multiply. Now I really don't want the second layer to be where it's at because these two layers are currently overlapping so I'm going to select this layer and drag it to the top. Then I'll click on my texture 02 and I'll copy this layer a few times to get a more dramatic look. You can simply do that by hitting Ctrl J or Command J if you are using a Mac. Notice that my texture is becoming a lot darker. 
We'll finish this off by placing the final texture over all of these layers right here. This right here is my final texture. I'll click on it and drag it in. Let's move it to the left. The blending mode for this texture will be set to darken so that it can fill out all of those blown out highlights that I have created in the beginning. Notice that our highlights were located right below this layer. You can turn it off to see all of your highlights. They're right here. We can finish this by selecting a photo filter. And what I have right now is warming filter 85. If you wish, you can increase or decrease the density of it. Once you're happy with it, you can simply double click on adjustments and that panel should disappear. If you need to bring it back, simply double click on it. So this is what we have. We started with this layer, then we made our picture black and white, we brought some texture in and set it to linear burn, and then we duplicated the same texture a few more times. Then we brought in the final texture, which we set to darken, and this filled out all the highlights that we have created on purpose. And then we finished it off by creating a photo filter. We can spend an entire day creating such artwork. Photoshop Elements gives us endless possibilities. Create something super cool and share it with us at our Facebook wall. Cheers!